Hi, I'm Lauren and welcome back to my craft room. I'm super excited that we're back with the second episode of my technique of the month featuring Pear Blossom Press Easy Lights. And this time I've paired them with the Kindred Stamp Set called Happy Afterlife to create this really cute doom buggy card. <laughs> I just think they're so cute and I was so excited to make this card. I use my watercolors, we have our push here with our lights, and I'm so excited to show you how I made this card. So let's get right into it. I'm starting off by stamping my image here. I already have one that is stamped with my Versafine in black, onyx black ink, and I embossed it with in a clear embossing powder that's for detailed images. I think it's called like detail clear. Um, I'll have the link to the embossing powder down below in my description, along with everything else that I've used. And I'm stamping it twice because I like to have a really nice clean line. And then again, using that embossing in detail clear because these are thinner lines with lots of you know, nooks and crannies in the image. And I want to make sure I get a really clean embossed line. And I'm going to use my heat gun and melt that embossing powder down. And I have my two images. I also stamped my images on some mixed media paper. I just bought a really big book from Michaels with a coupon and tear out pages as I need them. And I'm gonna zoom in here and just show you how I colored in one of my little doom buggy ghosts here. So wherever I want bright, vibrant color, I'm coloring directly with my watercolor pen. And where I want it to be a little more muted or a lighter shade, I use a water brush. So this is like a pen that has water already in it with a brush tip. And I just squeeze the pen to bring out some of the water. And you'll see every once in a while I go off camera. And that's because I'm wiping that brush down on my microfiber cloth to get rid of some of the water. I don't want it too heavy with water or it will be too diluted and it will take a long time to dry. <laughs> So now that I have one of these ghosts colored, um, oh, can't forget my pink cheeks. Even though they're blue ghosts, I always have a little bit of pink in the cheeks for my images. And I'm going to color in all six of these ghosts. Now for the doom buggy, I did a water wash first, and then I'm bringing in my black watercolor marker here. But it was too light, so I'm going to go over it a couple times and try to create some depth in that doom buggy. And for the handle, I'm doing it just the same that I, or the lap bar, <laughs> the same as I colored my images. I applied a little bit of color and diluted it up with my water brush pen. And I'm going to do the same for the back of my doom buggy here. Now I know for the inside of a doom buggy would probably be darker, but I wanted some contrast. So I'm going to pull out this kind of a bluish gray watercolor pen and I'm going to add background. So I'm applying a little bit of color and using my water brush pen to spread that color out and color the area. So I'm coloring all these little spots behind my ghosts here in their doom buggy and making sure I've got all of the white spots that are left in this gray color. And I'm doing the same for the top here. And the reason why I colored two of these images is because I'm going to layer one on top of the other. My easy lights are going to shine behind my ghosts, but I want them to still be inside the doom buggy. So it looks like the light is shining up from behind them as well. So now that I have everything colored and I use my heat gun to, to dry it up because I'm impatient and want to keep going, <laughs> I'm using a white gel pen just to add some white accents. I usually put little spots on the cheeks. And then anywhere where I think light would hit my images just to give it more depth. And I'm adding this white gel pen to the three ghosts that were my favorite that I colored in because those will be the ghosts that will be on the front of this layer. And then the back of the layer will be the back of the doom buggy. So I'm adding highlights just to what would show as the back of the doom buggy. 
So now that everything is done and colored, I'm going to put some of my stuff away and I'm going to start fussy cutting out these images. I could have used my brother's scan and cut, but I thought with just these two big images, it wouldn't be too much of an effort to just cut them out with my little scissors here. These are my favorite scissors to cut with. You can get them through Spellbinders. Uh, I just think they're the best for fussy cutting and cutting images out like this. So I did leave a little bit of a white border around my whole image, so I'm going to do the same for both. But as these are the ghosts that are going to be in the front, I'm not going to cut around the top of the dune buggy. I'm going to cut around their heads because <laughs> they're going to be popped up onto the image behind just to give a little bit of layer and depth to my ghosts and the dune buggy. So once I am done cutting this out, I realized that I didn't really like the space above their heads. So I'm going to actually cut right against their heads where the doom buggy, it would be the inside of the doom buggy. So I'm going around careful, cutting carefully to make sure I don't cut past the embossed line, just up to, like I said, the edge of the doom buggy. I'm glad I did this. I really like the look. Now for the more intricate part, I'm going to zoom in again and show you that I'm using my retractable knife to get into these little nooks and crannies and cutting out those gray spots in between my ghosts here in the doom buggy. And I feel like this is probably an added extra step that isn't completely necessary, but I like when the lights turn on that this light shines through in these spots and it gives them you know that they're individual characters sitting inside of the doom buggy so i'm going to go through and finish cutting out all those little spots and anywhere where i kind of cut a little too much into the embossing line i just took my black watercolor marker and from the back side added a little bit more black to the edge and the reason why i do it from the back is because if i accidentally slip with my marker. I don't streak a black line across my image after it's all beautifully colored and cut. It'll be on the back and not as noticeable. So now that this is finally done, it did take some time. I'm really happy how they layer on top of each other and I can move on to the next part of my card, which will be the background. Now for the background, I cut this large piece of the same mixed media paper and I'm gathering some Distress Oxides in purple and I'm going to also grab my black one later and I'm going to create a background. Now if you've ever been on the attraction where doom buggies are used, they uh, the background wallpaper for most of the attraction is purple with black. So I thought I would use purple as my background here. I thought it was also a really good color to go with the teals and blues of my ghosts. So I colored the center with that brighter purple color and then I went around with the more muted color and blended it in again and I'm going to grab my black set here and just kind of create a vignette look by adding it just to the edges and corners and I'm going to have all the colors I use listed down below in my description. And once that's done, I'm also going to bring back that purple and try to make my blend look a little more seamless and not as, not such a big contrast between the colors. And now that I'm happy with that, of course, I've got to add some splatter. If you know me, <laughs> I splatter almost everything, but this time I thought I would try some of my metallic watercolors. I've been really inspired by some of my fellow crafters using metallic watercolors. So I have this Prima set and I'm just using my water spritzer to add some black, some water to my black metallic ink here, making sure I have plenty of water so I can actually <laughs> flick on some of that color. And I wanted more of the metallic than the black, so I quickly dab it up and you can see that it leaves more of a metallic color behind. And I'm gonna use my water spritzer to activate some of that Distress Oxide to give my background a more splattery look. I use my heat gun just to help speed up the process of drying everything because again, I want to finish my card. I don't want to sit and wait. So now I decided that my characters needed a little more something behind them. So I cut out a piece of vellum using that scallop circle die cut. And then I also cut out my background so it would fit my A2 size card using the largest stitch rectangle from Lawn Fawn. 
And now I'm figuring out how I'm gonna lay my sentiment. I thought about using some dyes in my stash, but it was gonna be too thick. So I measure my sentiment, it's only about an inch thick. So I cut out an inch strip of black paper and I am not an eyeball crafter, I like to measure. So I'm figuring out where the center of this strip of paper will be and making sure my sentiment is lined up. And I'm gonna use my embossing tool because I am going to emboss my sentiment in white embossing powder on this black paper. So I'm using Versamark and then I'm gonna use my embossing powder in white to emboss the sentiment. I use my heat gun and I start from the back side because it will kind of, the heat will kind of warp your paper a bit. So use making sure it's kind of even to make sure that paper stays flat. And once that's done, I'm gonna let it sit and cool down. And once my sentiment is cool, I just take my microfiber cloth and wipe up that excess of baby powder for my embossing tool. It is black paper, so it's kind of noticeable where if it were white paper, it wouldn't be as noticeable. So now I need to trim down my sentiment to four and a quarter. And I don't know if you saw, I did some calculations real quick on my watch <laughs> to where I needed to cut this paper. That way it's nice and even. I am a bit of a perfectionist. I think it's my type A brain. I like to measure, I'm not an eyeballer. I have a card base cut to create an A2 top folding card. And I'm gonna start layering everything out I'm going to finally put my lights into my card now that all of my pieces are cut and ready to go. So I'm figuring out the layout. I know I want my little buggy here to sit on my vellum and be kind of the, where the brightest part of the card is. And I also want to have my sentiment strip. And I realized, of course, after I put everything away <laughs> that I forgot to stamp push here to let the card receiver know where to push so the lights turn on. So I'm doing that real quick with a Lawn Fawn Sentiment and that white embossing powder. And I realized I got a little bit of powder melted where I didn't want to, so I just used my retractable knife to kind of scrape that away. And I put my battery into my Easy Light. It's Everything is functioning. And now I'm going to place my two holes into my background. So I'm going to thread my lights through my background. I'm going to have my lights come through to be in the doom buggy. So I placed my vellum and my background and I'm poking a hole where the lights are going to come in from the back side. And I wanted to use my hole puncher, but it was, I kind of knew it was going to be too far in my card, but I tried anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and tape on my vellum piece. I'm applying tape to where I know the tape will be hidden behind the doom buggy. I'm lining it up and gluing that onto my background. Now I'm going to take the doom buggy piece that will be glued directly onto the card. I'm adding some purple tape to keep it in place and I'm going to punch a hole in the exact same spot. So now I will put some glue onto this and I can glue this onto my card base. So again, this is gonna be where my lights are coming through from the background and they will be shining out on behind my ghosts. Now to figure out where the hole will be, where the lights will thread through from the front, I just used a my hole punch and I'm gonna start threading my lights and I realize here that I made a mistake but it's okay I start putting my lights through the hole where they're gonna shine through behind my ghosts but um, they weren't fitting so I was like wait I need to make this hole a little bigger and it dawned on me that I forgot to thread my lights through the front first so I guess it worked out fine <laughs> so I'm threading my three lights from the front and then now going through in the back. And now that my hole is a little bigger, they're going through. I'm. It looks like I'm struggling and it's mostly because I don't want to accidentally tear off the LED from the wire. So I'm being very gentle, which means I need the hole to be bigger because I can't just, you know, push the lights through. I want to make sure I don't break them. So now that they're finally threaded through, I'm lining them up to be kind of the center of the heads where the ghosts are, which my daughter very lovingly asked me, why did the ghost's noses light up? <laughs> well, 
I made this while she was sleeping and I obviously need to keep her around while I use these lights because she is better with placement than I am. And I don't think the goat's like noses light up, but they do light up. <laughs> You'll see in the pictures later. So I'm using some clear tape, just normal tape from, invisible tape from Target to keep those wires and LEDs in place. And I'm just testing it before I glue everything together and I like the placement. I think it looks good. And I'm going to add some foam tape to my doom buggy and pop up my ghosts to the front. And I realized that this really wasn't super secure so I added a couple small strips behind the ghost hat on the left and the ghost head on the right just to help make sure that that stays um, nice and popped up. And of course I'm playing with my light a bunch because I made it and it's fun and I want to do it. <laughs> and now my push button is going to be on the front of the card as well. So I'm using some double sided sticky tape just to make sure that stays on nice and secure. And I'm lining it up so that my button will be underneath the push here. And I've made sure all my wires are fed through the back and I just used some invisible tape to keep that in place. And I am going to pop this up, so I'm going to use some foam tape all around the back of the card. And I'm going to pop up my sentiment strip, so I'm doubling up my foam tape because I do need to double up. The battery holder is a little thick. It's not super thick. It actually has a really nice thin profile, but it is thicker than my foam tape. So I'm doubling up my foam tape and I'm putting it on both sides of my battery compartment here and then putting on my sentiment strip and everything is working so I'm going to peel off my release paper from the back of my card and glue that onto the card base and I love it I think it looks great but there is a little bit of space between my sentiment strip and the battery compartment that was kind of bothering me so I put on a little bit of double-sided sticky tape and push that down and that made me feel better <laughs> everything was nice and in place I have these Trinity stamps embellishments they're these like iridescent faceted jewels and I'm placing them in different spots they're kind of clear so they're iridescent and clear and they take to the color that you glue them onto since I didn't have any black or purple that I wanted to use I thought this was a really good option because it adds some sparkle to it but also blends in with the background so now that the card is done, we can finally play with it. I'm going to turn off all the lights in my craft room and show you how this card looks in the dark. Look how cute! <laughs> and I did have someone ask me a question in my last video of how we can mail these cards because, you know, they are thicker. You will need the extra postage, but if you want to help save on battery life, you can create a little pull tab. Kind of like how you see on toys when there's a battery inside. So I took an arrow from a Lawn Fawn stamp and I cut this piece of paper to be half inch wide and I am testing it. It is enough to make sure that your battery, uh, it breaks the connection in your battery in the compartment. So I will show you here. It turns on, you put it in there, it doesn't turn on. So I'm going to slide that in and I'm going to slow down so you can see. So it's in, I push the button, nothing happens. And then I'm going to pull out my little arrow piece of paper here. And now when I push the button, it will turn on. So you can do that if you want to mail your card. Here are some close-ups. I really hope you enjoyed this technique of learning how to weave your wires through your card. I hope you hit like and subscribe and have a great day.